All right, guys and gals, we will be going over the second journal for this week. Um, I'll post it right after lecture. And remember, that's that's kind of how it works from now on. Um, at the very beginning of the week, I will um, post kind of like what the journals will be, but but then I'm not going to let you turn them in right there. Remember, like earlier this week, I posted, hey, this is what we're doing this week, but don't turn in the journals here. Uh, that's just so you know. Uh, what to expect, uh, what journals are coming. Um, that's, uh, and then every Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll do the first lecture, and then immediately after, I'll post the uh, tab to where you can turn in your journal entry, and then the second journal entry, uh, those are always going to be on Friday. One second, let me get my coffee. So, um, and then we'll go over more elements of our short story um, in the lectures. Now that we've finished up the book this week, we'll be jumping head on into uh, our short story creation um, next week. Uh, last time we talked about, uh, I'm, I'm basically doing the story with you. I'm doing my best to just come up with it on the top of my head and then if you guys follow the method that I'm doing like okay he's going to do his character first he's going to talk about his setting a little bit it'll gil it'll gil it'll give you the building blocks that you need uh once you say okay now I'm just going to start writing okay uh could you do this whole short story without those building blocks I mean yeah sure but that would be you know kind of like walking into uh like a like a football game without gear or walking into the classroom without pencils um, it, it's possible to get it done. It's going to be very uncomfortable, though. So first, let's talk about our second journal entry for the day or for the week. And it is a uh, minimum of 200 words. And um, side note, speaking of this, be sure that you'll text me or email me to set up your Zoom conference. All you have to do is meet with me on a Zoom conference or talk to me on the phone about questions that you may have and I'll give you a free quiz grade. This just allows me to make sure that everybody, I've had contact with everybody, okay? Um, so the second journal entry, back to it, 200 word minimum is Dumbledore presented an intriguing concept about courage and bravery when he stated that uh, standing up to one's friends is just as difficult as standing up to our enemies. Uh, Explain in your own words what this means to you. Uh, personally, I, I'm going on here, but it says, personally, I feel that it actually takes more courage and bravery to stand up to your friends. Uh, do you agree or disagree with my opinion? So if you'll recall, um, throughout this whole piece, this is really where the book and the movie are very different. Uh, in the book, Neville, or I mean in the movie, they, they make Neville more of a side character than he is in the actual book because remember in the book he's like he goes on like in the movie there's a particular instance where it has all three of the kids uh going to do a particular thing uh but in the book it was hermione neville and harry um ron wasn't involved in, in this particular instance um and neville becomes a uh, uh, a much bigger piece of the story later on. Now that we're done with the story, um, I can kind of tell you that Neville is the other child, basically. Like, if Harry wasn't the chosen one, uh, it would be Neville. Because there were, there, there were particular things in the prophecy of Voldemort um, that we learn about that basically Harry and Neville are the exact same. It's just... Voldemort took a left turn on this street and not a right turn, if that makes sense. Neville is basically Harry. Uh, it's just a little bit different. So Neville's a very critical part to this piece. Um, and in this, uh, the last part of this book, Neville is, throughout the whole piece, trying his best to kind of get the three of them, particularly Hermione uh, and Harry, to just follow the rules like don't 
do things even even if they know it's right he gets that but he's saying that like your actions aren't just affecting you because if you'll recall when anything bad happens um they get points taken away from their house and that's just like deductions you know what i mean um and it and it, and it impacts everybody so neville goes out of his way and in the movie it kind of the, the movie allows you to feel for Neville, and you're like, man, he's just trying to get them to do the right thing. But they still kind of make him out to be the, oh, he's the nerdy, like, kid that's in the way of Harry trying to do what he knows is right. But in my opinion, you know, Harry and Hermione and Ron are far too reckless for their own good. And because just, just imagine at how many points, if one little thing went wrong, how awful the consequences would be and not just in this piece throughout the whole harry potter series harry is always taking these risks thinking that it's just affecting him when in reality and he kind of gets to to see this towards the end of the movie when people start actually dying um like he 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 thinks that his actions are only going to impact himself or a small group of people but it's a rippling effect you know what i mean um, so, I mean, I forgot how that saying goes, but it's like every, every mistake you make hurts more than you think. And every good deed, uh, you know, does more than you think. Something like that. Basically, it's just like a rippling effect. I'm sorry I butchered it. But it's, it's just rippling effect. And Harry kind of sees that later on, but Neville sees it right away. And he does his best to stand up to them, especially towards the end, because after they get... 150 points deducted from the house um neville's like all right we can't do this crap anymore you know what i mean so um towards the very end of the book when harry and all of them go to, to on the final act to uh go through the series of tests which we'll talk about later on um one thing you need to kind of note is the difference between if you've seen the movie the differences in the trials that the movie shows and the trials that actually happen in the book like for example then in the movie the chess game is like 20 minutes like 15 minutes but in the book it's a page and a half maybe but um so they they they, they go off to do to try to take down these tests and neville finally stands up to them uh very heart strong um and um that's when he gets uh, paralyzed, uh, temporary paralysis, and uh, they go and do their thing. And then it's actually Neville's points that um, come to light uh, at the award ceremony. Because remember, uh, the Gr- Gryffindor didn't win at first. And then they awarded several other points to Harry and Hermione and Ron. And then finally, they gave... Uh, Neville 10 points, I believe, which still kind of, it still makes you believe that, like, what he did was less than uh, what Harry and them did, and in actuality, he, it was, but Neville got the biggest return for his risk, if that makes sense. Harry and Hermione and all them, they put everything on the line and they were rewarded much more handsomely neville put everything that he could on the line and he got what he deserved so it's like you know if if i'm at if if i'm playing a hand of blackjack or something and i put everything on the line and everything for me is a million dollars my payout is gonna be huge right especially if it's like a two to one or something like that on odds. But if all, but if everything I have is $10 and I put everything I have in there, granted, I will double my money, but you know, $2 million compared to $20. Okay. How much they invested, I feel like is appropriate, but let's jump into this journal real quick. Um, he says that, um, it takes a lot of courage basically to do what Harry and Hermione and Ron did. Uh, because they were standing up to an obvious enemy. But then Dumbledore awards Neville, stating that he knows that it's difficult to stand up to enemies, but it's even more difficult to stand up to your friends. So the journal entry is asking 
simply what it means to you. I, I kind of just explained what it means to me. Um, the when, when you're at a point when you have to stand up to somebody that you generally agree with, um, that's the hardest thing, okay? Um, especially, like, if you're working on something academic or sports-related or something. Like, how many times – y'all may be able to relate to this. Like, if you're an athlete, um, if you really love somebody, you know, you're, you're really, really good friends, and they're trying their best, and you know that they're screwing up on something – it's hard for you to be like, hey, how do I tell them that they're doing something wrong without them being like, oh, he's just a, you know, like he's always trying to be better than me or something like that. Like that's hard because you have to take those person's feelings into account. Same thing when you're standing up to them like, hey, you are doing something wrong, okay? That's easy to say to somebody who's just overtly bad because you know, like, hey, I, I, I'm standing up to you because you're doing something. But somebody that you support, so try to take this. Like, let's say if you are a Trump supporter, um, can you think of an instance when in your head you're like, oh, okay, that's kind of messed up. You know, you still support them 100%, but how hard is it to kind of convince yourself, okay, he's human, he can still make mistakes too. Same thing with, let's, let's go back to if you were a, a Barack Obama fan. Um, try to think of an instance when you were like, okay, that was the stupidest thing that you could have done. You know, same concept. Okay, so in this journal of 200 words, you're simply talking about um, what that means to you. If you have an example um, from your own life, that's great. Go, examples are great ways to fill in space. All right, so last time we – I gave you my – I came up with the character on the spot. I said he was a guy, and again, I, I couldn't think of anything creative, so I'm just – stuff that's real to me. So about – is it around 25, and I'm just – I'm not building direct links to the character yet. I'm just talking about, eh, I think he's like this, okay? And we did that with the character. So we know that he's a uh, single dude. Um, he's between jobs. He's average in everything except for one thing. What is that thing? I don't know. It's just that's a good thing that I can plug in there to maybe open up new avenues for the story later on. Um, I came up with a nickname with the name Beowulf Bluegill. I don't know if I'm going to keep that or not. It's just a filler, okay? Uh, and he's also somewhat of a loner. That also opens up avenues, okay? I'm not going to do anything. Is that a character? Absolutely not. That's the skeleton of one part of a character but i'm just doing building blocks to get the story started so remember it's character setting conflict plot and theme and with the theme that's something that you're taking from harry potter remember all my other lectures i talked about a lot of the other revolving themes uh with harry potter so let's say you know, I'm just going to pick, like, one of the more popular ones, like, just finding your courage in, like, the magical world. So if that's my theme that I want to do, then I can write that down, and I can incorporate that later on. But first, I need to, I need to figure out the building blocks of the character setting, conflict, and plot. Theme is already taken care of because you're just taking it from Harry Potter. So for the setting, now, as far as the setting goes, it's the same as with any short story. If you want to take this note down, that's fine. Um, the setting is the time and place in which something happens. Uh, we often use descriptors of like landscape and scenery, building seasons, things like that. So for my setting, I know that if I'm relating this to Harry Potter, there's kind of like two worlds. There's the regular world and then the, there's the magic world. Um, I know for sure that I want like a regular world, and if I look back, I said in my character that he's a native Texan, so I guess the regular world is just going to be regular uh, world is Texas, you know? Um, time, let's say it's, let's say it's 2010, okay, it's 2010, we're in Texas, um, that already has a landscape behind it okay but that's kind of the regular world um i know that in my story i want something that takes me away from the regular world just like in harry potter but i don't want it to be ma magic and witches and wizards so let me think of another kind of fantasy world that i would like i, I love space so let's say the other world 
is space slash another dimension. And this opens up more things. How is it that I'm going to get to that other world? Well, I don't know. Maybe the average everything except for one thing part of my character, maybe it has something to do. You see how these links are kind of building now? And I'm just making this up out of the top of my head, guys. So I know that my setting, I want it to be a regular world in Texas. The other world would be another part of the setting. That, I don't want it to be anything more than like another dimension. I don't want it to be like wizards or anything like that. Will there be magical creatures there? I don't know. Maybe. We'll figure it out. I haven't wrote that far yet. So, um, I don't, I'm not going to talk about the conflict yet. I'm just, I'm picking my character in my setting today. I picked my character last time. My setting today is the regular world in Texas about this time, uh, 2010 or so. Um, and then I know some part in my story is going to have the other world where something happens. And I don't know, I leave this world or leave this setting, this normal setting. If y'all remember the, the hero's journey is a circle, and the top half is the ordinary world. The bottom half is the spirit world or the other world. Um, and so, you know, my other world will be just, like, dimensions. Um, like, a, my, my, other, my other world is a dimension. Sorry, I got, I got thrown off track there. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be the end of our lecture at 16 minutes. Um, I will post the journal, the tab for you to be able to uh, um, submit this journal entry. Uh, again, this has nothing to do with your short story yet. This is all just a journal entry. I'll sum I'll open that up now, uh, and you guys can kind of go from there. Okay? If y'all need anything, um, be sure to text me two five four seven one seven four three four zero to set up a meeting so we can run through a couple things. Okay? You may think that you're good, um, but. Maybe there's something I can bring up that you maybe you forgot about. Okay? All right, guys. Appreciate y'all.